Welcome to PetX Talks, pet experts empowering pet parents. Pet parents deserve expert knowledge and inspiration directly from pet experts. The topics will range from history to innovation, from health to safety, from training to philosophy, and from experiences to inspiration. The pet experts range from veterinarians to researchers, authors to historians, organizations to individuals, and anyone with important information and inspiration for the pet world. We all want to do the best we can for our pets and the pet world. PetX Talks, the experts who give them, and the topics they share will help us achieve that. Are you ready to be empowered? Then join us for a PetX Talk. This PetX Talk is brought to you by Pet World Media Group, your partner in all things pet media. Additional funding and considerations provided by Pet World Insider, Dogwise, and Life is Pawfect. Hi, my name is Deborah Jo Japuzio, and I'm the president of the Emma Zen Foundation. Emma Zen is actually my dog. She is a shelter survivor, and I've put a lot of personal work into her safety primarily because she's a biker dog and being prepared has allowed us the freedom to be out there and experience life without having the worries of what if something happened. We were just pet people, you know, mom and dog, going around doing our own thing, as unique as it may be, when we stumbled across a pet oxygen mask and I had no idea what it was. I was told that a pet oxygen mask was an oxygen mask. It was just specifically designed to fit around the snout of a dog or a cat. And it, what it accomplished by a rubber seal that's at the base of the mask was that it would close the jowls. And that way, clean oxygen being brought into the mask would be dire delivered directly into the nostrils. And that I know is a really important feature of pet CPR as I am a pet first aid and CPR instructor. So I thought, pet oxygen masks, I don't understand. What are they for? They're supposed to be for firefighters and all our other first responders so that they have the right equipment to save our pets. And I never stopped to think what our first responders are trained in, much less what they carry in their vehicles. So I went to my own hometown down in Anaheim, California, and I asked them if we could put some pet oxygen masks on their trucks. It's a little tricky though. You can't just donate a kit. There's a term called standardization, and it's something that the fire departments have been doing for years. Our men and women are trained during an emergency to go to the same location on every like vehicle to get the same piece of equipment. And we needed to take their protocol into consideration. It taught us their standards and their protocol. There are a few places selling pet oxygen masks and you may get excited and go out and get one and donate one. And we encourage you to do a little bit more than just donating. While you can donate a pet oxygen mask kit, it doesn't mean it's going to be used if it doesn't fit their requirement of standardization. What did firefighters do before they came out with pet oxygen masks? All they could do was use a human mask. They take a human mask and lay it on the ground and turn up the air. This was referred to as blow by air. The pet's nose would just be aside the human mask in hopes that the pet would resuscitate. As you can tell by the design of the new mask and keeping the jowls closed, the pets resuscitate much more efficiently and effectively with this equipment. Our organization has changed the number of successful resuscitation attempts. We've created a program called Team O2. Many people are interested in putting the kits in their area. We teach you the standards to get these masks established properly within a department. That way our level of credibility is high and you know your fire department is using the kits. We don't want you to donate, we want you to learn to establish them into your fire department and or paramedic services. And why do we do this? Well, for a lot of reasons. Number one, my pet's my family. Number two, that there's a lot of scary statistics out there. According to the United States Fire Administration, an estimated 500,000 pets are affected annually by fires. And while there's no clear statistics, the standard guesstimate is that approximately 40,000 of those perish every year. And the solution? The solution is making sure that our first responders carry pet oxygen masks. Being the president of the Emma Zen Foundation, 
has been an honor and a privilege. Working to help keep your pets safe has been one of my greatest achievements in life. I would have liked to have thought I could have found this road on my own, but of course, we dog lovers know it takes a good pet to get you there. Hi, I'm here with Deborah Jo Trapuzio from Team O2 and the Emma Zen Foundation. You just finished doing your talk on pet oxygen masks. And I think a lot of people out there were surprised to hear that pet oxygen masks aren't standardized equipment or readily available to our fire departments. Oh, I was surprised when I found out about that. Uh, no, they're not. There's actually something called a standard for those engines when they first arrive new. And what goes on an engine, I found out, is dependent on where that engine's at. So if it's in an area with a lot of brush fire, it's established with a lot of brush equipment. If it's a place with the elderly or youth, then maybe more pediatric style equipment would be in that fire truck. So, you know, the fire department is really dependent on how much product they can put in there from their incomes. And our pets just happen to be down on that list. And I sort of understand that, you know, if something happens and I'm in a fire, I want that truck to be able to be equipped to save my life. So most of them really just get the pet oxygen mask kits through donation. Well, the other thing that really struck me is that you were just like all the rest of us pet parents, <laughs> yet you were moved to action. Let's talk about that process because anybody can do with the drive that you have what you've done. Yes, anybody can. And we've actually opened up our doors for the Team O2 to allow those people to do what we are doing out here in California. In fact, in California, we've established over 2,500 kits. And uh, it's a, that's a big number. But one of the most important aspects is this not my foundation. There are so many volunteers that work on a daily basis. They help us in the office. They help us at pet expos. They help talk to other people that are out there in another state who say, I want this at my house. And we have a person who will actually call you and say, here's what you need to do. Here's what you can run through. And we just opened the doors and said, you know what? We did all the hard work. It took us six months for me to get them established in Anaheim properly. And, uh, you know, I said, I, the hard work's done. It's a nonprofit. We've got the protocol down. We have the training down. And we'll even help you do some of the fundraising. We have a great social media following, and we'll even help them with that aspect. So it's been wonderful to open the doors. So many like-minded people out there, so many wonderful people in the pet world who want to take care of their pets properly. I think the other thing that is interesting to all of us pet parents is we talk about preparation. We talk about preparation. We but talk. We don't, we don't always do it. <laughs> so important, and I think you have elevated that discussion. Let's talk about well, it Well, you know what? What I have found in other people is what actually happened to myself. You know, I live in California. We have earthquakes. Let's get ready. Let's get water. Let's get food. How many of us really have that kit available for ourselves? But tell somebody who's in love with their dog to do it for their pet, and all of a sudden we have an emergency preparedness kit. So it's actually been a really great model to get our pets prepared and then go ahead and follow through with what we need for ourselves. Well, I want to thank Deborah Jo Trapuzio, Team O2, and the Amazon Foundation for doing an important PetX talk, and I want to thank all of you for watching. Thank you for joining us for this PetX talk. To learn more information about Deborah Jo Chapuzio, visit emmazenfoundation.com. Funding for PetX Talks is provided by Pet World Media Group, your partner in all things pet media. Additional funding and considerations for PetX Talks is provided by Pet World Insider, taking you inside the world of pets. Visit PetWorldInsider.com for more radio interviews and expert articles and videos. Dogwise Publishing, all things dog. For all of your dog book needs, visit dogwise.com. Life is Perfect, a gift book, a whimsical collection of themed dog portraits accompanied by wit and wisdom by the photographer. Visit thepotographer.com. For more information and other excellent PetX Talks, visit PetXTalks.com.
This has been a Pet World Media Group production.